Hey guys and welcome. In this video, I'm going to write a VD load subroutine that simulates the tire loads of a vehicle moving on the surface of a slab. Let's take a look at the VD load subroutine first. It has inputs such as embellock and dimension, step time, total time, amplitude, current, and nodal or integration points, coordinates, velocity, direction for the composites, load type, its name, and the output value. So the value represents the load that is being uh, put into the process by Abacus. And don't forget that Abacus passes the integration points by blocks into the VD load. So we have to write our calculations inside a do loop. So the VD load subroutine uh, can be used alongside the VUMAT subroutine and other uh, subs. Uh, it is called for every integration point and Abacus accepts only one VD load per job. So if you have multiple loads, you have to find a way to accommodate them into a, a one VD load subroutine. If the load is uh, two dimensional uh, or a surface load, uh, then the dimensions would be F L minus two. And if the load is a body force type, the dimensions would be F L minus three. And don't forget that the output of the VD load is going to be multiplied by the magnitude that you have entered uh, in the Abacus CAE. So for an example, we are going to try to write a VD load uh, for a moving load. And so uh, the load uh, is identical for all of the tires and it's going to be uh, equal to P and the dimensions of the tire are represented by A and B and the distances between the uh, vehicle's axis are uh, represented by LA and LB. So we are going to try to use these parameters for our calculations. Before continuing with our subroutine, I want to uh, show the uh, problem here. Uh, in here, I have a still slab uh, with the dimensions of uh, 10 meters in wide and 20 meters long. And I want to have a, a symmetric loading on the face of this slab. Therefore, I must uh, displace this slab to the starting point of um, my coordinate system. In another words, the coordinates of my starting point would be 0, 0, 0. And the boundary conditions of uh, my slab uh, would be the bottom face would be pinned, uh, so I have uh, no uh, displacements uh, during my analysis. And uh, pressure load is applied to the face of my slab with the magnitude of 1. The rest of the model is a typical modeling procedure, so I won't be concentrating on it. So now I'm going to show how the calculations work for the moving load and how we are going to write our VD load subroutine. So assume that uh, we uh, want to have a symmetric uh, loading on the slab. I'm going to uh, divide the load in half. So uh, I would have two loading uh, conditions, uh, top and bottom. And I'm going to uh, use the width of the slab and LAB to define the locations of 
two routes for our loading. Then I'm going to exclude these sections that have no load using an if condition and make them disappear in our uh, calculations. Therefore, the only parts that would have loadings uh, in our calculations would be the tire loads. I'm going to do this using if conditions and current coordinates of my uh, integration points coordinates. The tricky part is that we have to make the load move. If we're going to use these calculations and don't make the uh, load move with the step time, we're going to have a constant location for our loads. Therefore, I'm going to assume a velocity for my load. For example, I'm here I'm going to uh, use uh, 20 meters per second for my uh, velocity and assume that uh, the vehicle is going to pass my slab in uh, one second in one second therefore uh, i can um, calculate my displacement x using the formula v t thus uh, t is going to be my step time v is a constant uh, parameter then uh, i'm going to have uh, my displacement for the moving load so well for the vd load subroutine this is the header and dimensions next i'm going to define my um, parameters a b l a l b p for the tire pressure the slab bit uh, from which i'm going to calculate the upper and the lower roots of the uh, load the vehicle velocity and i'm going to calculate the displacement of my load using vehicle velocity multiplied by the step time so i'm going to uh, have my calculations inside a do loop uh, first i'm going to uh, divide the load into half uh, along uh, the width uh, so i'm going to use an if condition uh, in which the current coordinates one. Uh, why am I using one? If you look at my slab, the x and z directions only define my loading, and the y direction does not have any effects. So uh, to divide um, load in half, I must use the x or one direction, and to define the load in longitudinal um, direction i must use the z or the third direction so i'm going to use the current coordinates uh, one to divide the load into uh, two parts now, so why am i using an and condition it's because uh, I want to take into account the width of my tires. So I have uh, two points for my uh, division. Next, if uh, I have loads inside my tires for the, con uh, for the calculations, I'm going to uh, have a load P for the output value. And if the condition does not fall into that category, the value of my load would be equal to zero. Remember that if you do not use value zero for other conditions, the calculations would uh, have errors. And the second part would be similar to the first part and the only uh, differences would be how I calculate the uh, con uh, 
current coordinates of my uh, integration points, which is uh, pretty straightforward, and I won't be concentrated on them. Remember that uh, in my every calculations, I calculations I must use uh, value km equal to zero for the parts that I want to exclude. So when I want to have load on my slab, uh, I should only have loads where the tires are. Next, I'm going to see how my VD load uh, subroutine simulates the moving load. If I use that subroutine for a job and complete the job, I can see my results. Uh, to see exactly the nodal stresses, you must uh, use enforce output. In this matter, uh, my stresses would be along the y direction, so I'm going to use enforce 2. And if you start from step time 0, you can see that my uh, exact uh, tire loads are simulated using the VD load subroutine and it moves with the step time of my analysis as you can see then the front uh, axis would uh, vanish and only uh, at the end the uh, rear axis would be calculated uh, since we are assuming that the vehicle starts from the right, of, the right side of the slab and continues along the longitudinal axis. This concludes our video. If you find this video useful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.